going live. It's Monday. Hi, everybody. Happy Monday. If you're watching this on a replay, put hashtag replay in the comments, please. If you're watching it live, tell me hi. Tell me what you're working on if you're knitting or crocheting or spinning or making dinner. Hey, mom. I tried to hurry up and rush and make dinner before I um, ran out the door to get to the shop today. I got it halfway done and then said, all right, all you have to do is cook the chicken and put it together. <laughs> oh, there's everybody. Jackie, Joan, mom working on the butterfly tunic. Julie's working on a cappuccino tea. Joyce, so I know Joyce and Suzanne are doing Sock Madness. I think Vicki is doing it too, Vicki Lewis. Um, if you are somebody that participates in Sock Madness, um, which <laughs> I seem to recall last year after it was done, I told Joyce that we would sit and kind of talk about what it is and we never did, but that's okay. Melissa working on it as you wish. Oh, Joan, you're doing it too. Awesome. Stacy's making another all point solve. Cheryl crocheting a helix, helix jacket. Kathy working on puddles the duck. <laughs> oh, she fell down the rabbit hole. <laughs> Cindy's working on the banks, banker sweater. Anchor. Okay, that makes more sense. Still some people working on the La Mandiola. That's great. Okay, so it's seven. So I should officially get started. Um, welcome to Monday Motivation. My name is Kristen. I am the owner of the Little Yarn Shop in downtown Saginaw, Michigan. Shop hours are Wednesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. I try and go live every Monday. I will, I know for sure next Monday, I'm not gonna be live because I will be in Chicago. Um, <laughs> I have no idea. I'll, I'll be with a bunch of high schoolers. So I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't wanna subject everybody to that. I'm not sure I'll survive it, but I'm sure I will. <laughs> um, but under normal circumstances, I go live every Monday on Facebook at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Would love for you to join. And if you have knitting groups that you're a part of, or you have um, friends that are knitters, I would love for you to share the video and spread the word. So let's see what else. E finished her tea. Michelle working on a caramelized sugar hat. Ah, Bev working on your shawl. Yeah, so if you join late, tell me what you're working on. If it's if it's yarn related or not, I'll, I'll take either one. Um, so I did say today is March 14th, I think. I can't believe we're halfway through March already. It's crazy. Um, so what's going on around here? I am, while I'm chatting, I'm knitting on my Simple as hat. Hat. Simple as hat. Hat. Um, you know, I tell you guys what, I should compile a stack of all of the shop samples I have made with colors that companies decide to discontinue. <laughs> I feel like it's one of my superpowers <laughs> in, in, in the wrong way, and I don't get it. I mean, I do try and I try and pick a color that I think is would be more difficult for people to visualize, and that's completely different from what the pattern picture shows. Um, maybe what happens is a lot of people have a hard time visualizing that color, and so it doesn't it's not as popular. I don't know. Uh, Linda playing the shawl on a pair of socks. Now working on a hat. Linda, you've been busy. So that's all to say that this color, which I thought would be a really popular one because it's grays and browns and neutrals, they discontinued. 
Um, I did ask my sales rep to <laughs> have the warehouse check and see if they had any around, but I'm not, I'm not holding out too much hope on that. I, the last time he was here, I was telling him this, that um, we were talking about the Pendenza, that cotton yarn, and I said, it never fails. I pick a color and you guys discontinue it. And he said, we've only discontinued like two colors. Yep, one's the one I use. It's just how it goes. But you can still get an idea of what things look like. Hi, Tammy. Fran working on the temperance shawl. Excellent. So that's one of the things I'm working on while I'm chatting. I, If I had gotten on the ball enough, I would be working on a sweater, on a sleeve for my, um, my panic sweater. So I can show it to you guys this week. Like really, now that, now that it's officially out there, uh, the panic sweater is by Casapinka. The pattern itself is not out yet, but I can show you this little, little one sheet. It's a completely different look on hers. And it's hard to see because it's dark. Um, but there are, uh, so she's released the schematic and the requirements for yarn. So I'll show you mine and then we'll talk about it. I'm knitting the second size, which should be a uh, finished chest circumference of 44. Um, but that's with, she says six to 12 inches of positive ease. So the smallest size is a 40 because it's supposed to be oversized and boxy, but I am loving how this is turning out. And we realized, um, oh yeah, Joyce, we're gonna talk about bamboo pop. <laughs> Yours is already pulled aside. Um, I realized one of the reasons I was kind of ho-hum about it was because I was knitting on it and looking down at it. So if you look down at this, it kind of doesn't look as exciting. It looks a little bit flat and a little bit boring, but once you hold it up and you see all, it's just texture. She does say in here, um, there are fewer different types of stitches than there would be if you did like her snarko meter or something like that. And it's all right up in the top. Then the body is just stockinette with ribbing at the bottom. I know it looks really short. Um, I knit the length she said, she calls for a finished length from the underarm down of nine and a half inches, which is kind of short. So it would be um, probably just at, you know, like the pants line. Uh, but the benefit of shirts like this is because it's top down, you can do whatever you want with it. You can keep going and making it longer. There's no body shaping. Um, the same with the arms. You can do short sleeves, long sleeves, but to hold it up, well, the chair's in there. And you can't really tell, but my jeans are right here. So it would be right at my waistline. But it's really cool. So I decided I was going to use, and I, I know I talked about this last week, the CIO cotton. I, this yarn is such a great transition yarn, a good spring fall. It's 50% organic Pima cotton, 50% fine merino. What's nice is, I mean, it's like a sport DK, but it's got 329 yards per skein. So where she says, if you use a typical DK weight yarn, you'd need between five and 10 skeins. With this, you only need somewhere between four and seven. Uh, Linda, yes. Casapinga likes to wear her sweaters shorter than most, right? She does. Um, and I, it's probably shorter than what I would normally do, but I am trying to knit it so people can see if they follow the pattern, this is what it's going to look like. I really had plans, grand plans to work on my sleeve sleeves this weekend. But I know we've talked about this before. This little set of twist shorties is probably one of my favorite inventions ever. And they were at the shop 
stuck in a bag with my purple sweater that I haven't worked on in a while. But um, yeah, I can do magic loop. I can do double points, but these little guys are the best way I found. Um, they'll go from a 12 inch to a nine inch circumference. They're the best way I found to not have any jogs. Um, as much as I would try, the only other thing that's close is the flexi flips, but it seemed like any other method, I would always end up with a little bit of a ladder. Um, so once I got here today, I grabbed my sixes and I have a sleeve on there. So that'll be my, my next project to work on. So the CIL cotton, I did size two, which if you used this yarn, you would need four skeins according to her calculations. I am on skein number three with that much left. That's a lot left. I didn't weigh it. I meant to weigh it before I started. I will weigh it before I start the sleeves because my plan is, um, <laughs> Diane, I can't believe you don't have those needles. <laughs> I, I do, people ask me because there are two sets. There's the red set and the blue set. I do tend to gravitate to the blue ones more. Their size is four to eight. I, I find I do more sweaters in that range, but um, the smaller set is zeros to threes. You guys, I'm all over the place, just like usual. But so this calls for, I didn't use much of my third skein. Like I, I joined my third skein just as I started the ribbing at the bottom. If I did the full length sleeves the way she writes it, I'm sure I would go into that fourth skein. My plan and what I would recommend if people didn't wanna break into an extra skein, my plan is to, oh, I wanna split this between the two sleeves. So there are multiple ways to do that. I could either knit them simultaneously, kind of tandem, since I'm not doing magic loop. If I was doing magic loop, I could do two at a time sleeves. Um, I could do that, pull from the outside and the inside and know that my sleeves are gonna end up the same length. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that. And, and the way I would do it is to knit we look at the pattern and see, I think it's got decreases. Yep. So you do um, like a typical sweater, you do decreases down the sleeve. So I would, um, if I were working two at a time, I would knit one sleeve till I got to a decrease round then knit the other sleeve till I got to that same decrease round and kind of go back and forth that way. Um, so they were progressing at a similar rate. If I don't do that, I would weigh this before I start. And because I'm going out of town next week and I'm not sure how long this is gonna take me, I probably would use my scale and my ball winder and wind it into two separate balls. That way I didn't have to worry about keeping track later on. So. We'll see, I'm not quite sure what's gonna be the uh, easiest to travel with. I am a little bit excited about sitting on a charter bus. <laughs> well, I'm a little bit excited about being forced to sit stationary for like five hours <laughs> and not have to be driving. So I'm hoping to get a whole bunch of knitting done. You know how that goes, pack like 15 things and work on two. Um, so colors of this, and I do have more of the cotton on order. This is the silver that I'm using. Um, then there is, so if this is something you're interested in, I have, um, obviously I have all of these colors here in the shop, at least one of, I have them all on order. Also, they should be here within the next, well, they're not gonna be here by the 19th, I don't think. And that's when her cast on is. She didn't give us a whole lot of time on that. Um, but if you don't mind starting a little bit late, I have a bunch of the yarn on its way to me. So this is, she calls it cerulean. It's like a really, really, if you look at it on its own, it looks like a pale gray. 
but when you hold it next to the gray, you can see it's like a really pale blue. It's almost like that, the blue the sky is when they're just like the tiny little wispy clouds and not very much. So that's called cerulean. And my gray, there's a sand color, it's really pretty tan. So the way this yarn is made, you might be able to see it with this. It's this chain at construction. It's, so it's like a little, almost like a little tiny I cord, which makes it really, really light. Um, it doesn't feel so heavy, it, it's not so dense, which is why they can get so much yardage into a sport weight stain. So if you see a color that you want, or you are interested in, in making sure that we have enough yarn for you, just put in the comments what color it is that you like. There is this beautiful bright orange. They call it coral. It's not coral, it's, it's just orange. There's coral, there's orange. Um, there's this beautiful bright blue. Called Atlantic. Then there's this robin's egg blue, which I think is, so there are the two different blues. This robin's egg blue is beautiful too. They came up with a lot of um, pale colors, but they're not, I don't know, they're pale, but they don't seem like overly pastel -y to me. So there's this pale purple. There's the blue next to the purple, so you can kind of see. There we go, that's the purple. And then there's this lime green. That does not look green. Well, at least on my screen, it doesn't look green. It's a lime green. It's a bright lime green. And then mint green. So maybe maybe if we hold them up this way, we'll, we'll be able to see. I can't see between things. I don't know. On my monitor, it makes it look a little bit more olivey. It's not. It's 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 a bright springy green. Um, normally, you could see the top row of heritage yarns a little bit better, and I would point out, but they're up too high. Can't see this time. That's what I'm working on. My husband keeps asking me if I'm working on his sweater. Uh, I'm not. I figure at this point, he's not gonna wanna wear it before next winter. So I got a little bit of time. <laughs> so what did I finish? You guys, I finished my elephant. And I brought in the whale too, because I feel like you need to see both together, but. Look at this sweet little thing. It's a little bit, you know, I'm still working on shaping him. But again, with the African flowers, total I had six colors. So I had a light and a dark purple, a light and a dark blue, and a light and a dark gray. We were joking that you know, look at his cute little tail. From the back, he looks a little bit like a hippopotamus. <laughs> but he's just well fed. So I have, I brought the whale in so you can see the pair of them together. Well, there we go. The elephant and the whale. Now that I have them both done and I feel like I've been able to brag about them a little bit, they will go on to their new home. And I'm done doing animals for a little while. <laughs> oh, Melissa, I think she's talking about this one. 
Let's see. I know Diane's talking about blues. So the gray is in the middle. There's the bright blue. This really kind of pale, pale blue. The robin's egg blue. It's hard to see the different choices. Mama likes the robin's egg blue, yes. I did have a sweater knit out of this purple, um, but somebody bought it, the sample, which is okay, because now I can make another one. <clears throat> so let's see. That's what I finished. I should look at my notes again here. That's what I'm working on. So what am I wearing? We haven't talked about that. This is an oldie, but a goodie. And I just got in a whole bunch of bamboo pop um, last week. So I figured I'd talk about a project. So this is the Mirabelle poncho cowl. I'm not sure what it's called, um, but yeah, it looks a little different this way than it does in the pattern pictures, although she does show a variety of ways, but I have it kind of rolled up and on as a loose cowl. But to show it in its full beautiful glory. Look at that lace. It's just a really delicate, fairly simple yarn overs increases and decreases, well, yarn overs and decreases really, and garter edges, you knit it in one strip. You knit the whole thing. A lot of ponchos are, are um, constructed like this, where you knit the whole thing flat and then you have one edge that you seam So you get kind of that big drapey. Uh, so the pattern calls for anywhere from 443 to 591 yards of a DK weight yarn. I would say bamboo pop. I tend to use it as a sport weight yarn. And this only took one skein. I think well, obviously it's going to depend how, how long yours is and how much it drapes based on the material. This bamboo pop, um, because it's a bamboo cotton blend, 50-50, it will drape and relax. Uh, what's nice though is it can go in the washer and dryer. Sarah's mom, Vicki, has crocheted tops and they, it holds up really well, holds its shape really well. This little guy has been hanging in the back for a couple of years, I think. Um, the poor thing, I keep forgetting about it. Um, so it probably needs to go in the washer and dryer or washed and laid out to block because it has draped a little bit more. I have had customers use a single skein of sock yarn to make one of these. Um, it's really, because it's you cast on one shape and just keep knitting, it's really a versatile pattern. Um, <laughs> I can't obviously go over all of the colors of bamboo pop because I got quite a few in. Um, I should have kind of put, looking at it this way, I should have maybe put all the blues together, but I was kind of trying to break up the brights. Um, and I don't know if you can tell, the one I'm wearing, they call it Darling Pink. It's a very pale, what do I do with my white skinny yarn? So there's white. Melissa said it was kind of coming across a little bit taupey, but it's a really pale pink. So depending on how big you want it, you would just need one or two skeins. Um, I can, if there, if you see a color over my shoulder that you want to see more closely, put it in the comments and I can, I would be happy to fold it up. 
Um, Joyce is going to do a baby sweater out of these two, which will look really, really neat. So there's, you know, a bright turquoise, a darker turquoise, that, that coral that I held up earlier um, to compare with the other yarn. Purples, bright corals, blues, all kinds of different colors. Bev, is there a red? I didn't get any reds. Hmm. This one's not a red red. They call it what? Fire mix. So compared to the coral, it's a little bit deeper, but I wouldn't call it red. It's um, different color of pinks and oranges and all different shades. But I did not get a red. Diane grabbed the one that I only have two of, so I'll make sure I get Diane's two coral skin set aside. They make fun multicolored some that are different shades of one color. Some are shades of all kinds of different colors. This one's on parade. So we have this neutral, like different browns and tans. If we don't talk about a specific color now, um, Lisa, yes, you could use fingering weight yarn. I have had people use a skein of sock yarn for it. Um, I would, I would probably recommend going down a needle size. I wonder if I can see what size needle I used on mine. Let's see how I can get here without getting myself too confused. I had it just pulled up. In my projects. I used a nine on mine. Now I have to get back to comments. Bottom rack, middle, straight back next to the green. This one, is that the one you're talking about? Bottom rack, this way. What, that? <laughs> I don't know what you're... I don't know which ones you're looking at, Melissa. You have to unmute yourself and just, oh no, you can't unmute yourself because I'm on mute. Okay, go straight. There's, Hang on. go straight to the bottom rack and straight back, all the way back to the back edge. Go straight to the bottom rack. This one? Okay, straight back. And then go one, two yeah. to the right, that one. Same as this one. Oh, I thought it might be red because it's so dark under there. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I had to mute you again because it was getting a little crazy. <laughs> so thanks. I know it's kind of hard to tell because they, they are super dark back there. But that's a pretty spring one too. Pale purples and yellows and pinks. So many colors. So yeah, um, I used a size nine needle for mine, um, which might be what it calls for. If it does, I should have gone down a needle size. Maybe that's why mine's a little bit more drapey, but I like it this way. If you used a fingering weight yarn, I would probably recommend going to a six or a seven. So it's not too open. Um, e, Elaine E, knit one of these or more I can't remember if she knit one or multiples a little while back, but I don't remember what size needle she used for hers and she did fingering weight yarn. So if I don't talk about a specific color that you like or you wanna know more about, you can, even if you're not watching this live, you can put it in the comments. I do go back and look at the comments afterwards. Sometimes it takes me a day or two to um, get back on track and recover. <laughs> Malcolm does. Yes, exactly. Close your eyes and pull one. It'll be fine. The parade. I don't remember which one the parade one was. That one. On parade. 
orange, yellow, green, pink, purple. It's really pretty. I only have one of these guys. That's a little loner back there. So you can put it in the comments. You can message me through Facebook. You can text the shop phone. Uh, it's an iPhone, so it takes great pictures. I can send pictures back and forth. Shop number is 989-274-8571. The other day I almost gave out my daughter's cell phone number instead of the shop number. And then there's too many numbers rattling around in my head. So at 950 a ball, the yardage is great, 292 yards. Look at that, Tammy, orchid smash. Ooh, it's pretty purples. I don't know how accurate, that looks more blue, but it's a lot of pretty purples. 292 yards per ball. This, this stuff sometimes gets forgotten about, but I, oh, I did have, this is why this is draped here. Sorry, Melissa, I didn't warn you about this one. It's the Cancun boxy top. Yet again, I'm pretty sure this is a color they discontinued or it's just always out of stock when I try and <laughs> when I try and order it. But same yarn, bamboo pop, done into this, it's called Cancun Boxy Top. It's done in two, two squares and then seamed along the side and along the shoulders. Again, just a really fun sampler. There are some drop stitches. There's some simple lace. It's done in a way that if you wanted to, um, yes, Tammy, there are two of purple. These guys, yes. I've got four or five of those. They're so pretty. So the top, if there was a stitch pattern you didn't like, you could easily kind of plug in something alternate. Um, hers shows it sort of cropped. This one's, again, it's been, it's been hanging out for a little while. So it's probably a little bit drapier than it was when I first knit it. Um, I don't remember how many skeins I used. Look and see if I could find some ends. My guess would be two. Well, there's an end. I did such a good job weaving my ends in, I can't even find them. Sometimes I cheat. They tell you you shouldn't use your um, your ends from your cast on or bind off to um, seam things up. I do. I don't know why they tell you that, but pattern says 480 to 500 yards. So, and I, I'm not sure if it comes in other, if, if it's just one size or if it has different sizes, but I would say, well, two balls would get you more than 500 yards. So you should, you'd be safe to make it longer. Yeah, mom, it would be a good top for Florida. Maybe I should pack that. It won't, it won't take up too much space. So that's kind of handy. The last couple of years, I think I've either knit a top in Florida or finished one. I don't know. I feel like I'm always, I get down there and it's nice and warm and I want to make all the things, <laughs> but I want to be able to sit by the water and not have everything stick to me. So there's that. Um, we talked about that. So upcoming things. I think this is the last, um, I do have some yarn here that you guys haven't seen before. So don't go anywhere. I'm not saying this is the last thing I'm saying before I sign off. I have some good stuff coming. Yep, Diana. Tuck those away. 
Um, two things coming up. I know last um, last week we talked a little bit about LYS Day coming up on April 30th. It's a Saturday. It turns out, I'm sure I know this every year and I'm sure I forget this every year. Um, it's always the last Saturday in April. Yes, that would be two balls, yeah. Um, and there are typically, um, Casa Pinka does a shawl design. Uh, this year she has told shops it's a two skein shawl um, and she will have coupon codes where if you buy the yarn from the shop, you'll get a code to get the pattern for free. Dreaming Color usually has some kind of promotional things. I just got an email about some of the things that they're doing. They, they haven't finalized them yet, but it's not all shawls. So um, for those of you that have, have the desire to do something other than a shawl, there are options. I will have a few other surprises and that I can't talk about yet because it hasn't been finalized yet. But I am doing a pre-order for locally dyed kits for a six color shawl. May or may not be something we've talked about before, um, but I wanna do this like all local as much as I can. So I had this whole big long um, <laughs> little yarn shop, local yarn kit for local yarn store day. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out that's too much. <laughs> and you can't really put, um, what do you call that? When you just use the first letter of everything, it's still too much. So these kits are $135. The value of what's in there is going to be at least $145. Again, I'm still working on details, but the yarn is dyed locally. Um, the little goodies, notions wise, that are going to be in there will be made locally. I want to have some sort of little edible locally made treat, but I want to do as much local as I can. So there are three different colorways available. Each kit has six skeins of yarn, 50 grams. This is packaging is really noisy, so I'm trying to open it quietly. I'll show you a quick peek of this is kit A. And we should have we should have come up with some fun name for for the for each kit, but we didn't. Six gains, 50 grams each, uh, 218 yards, merino yak nylon. So this is not a yarn I've had in the shop before. A long time ago, I had a couple skeins of yak from Mint Rain, but those have been long gone. The dyer is Blooms in You. Some of you know her. Her name's Stephanie. She's local. And we've been working on these kits for a little while now. Um, and I will pull all the colors out. The, so there are 6, 12, 18, 18 colors in total. The kits don't have any repeat colors between them. Some might look a little bit similar, but, but they're not. So um, that's why we're doing this as a pre-order because it's a lot of work for her to dye 18 different colors but I think it's going to be something fun. So pre-order is open now starting today. Um, it will, I'm closing the pre-orders. I'm going to try and do everything I can by the end of March. Uh, my, my deadline deadline is April 4th to get the numbers to her and my goal local meeting within 50 miles. It's probably even closer than that, Malcolm. I would say within 25 miles so far um, in terms of where my vendors are. My goal is to have these so they are ready to pick up on local yarn shop day, April 30th. So she needs a little bit of lead time on that. I may have a few extra on hand, but um, if you want to be guaranteed a kit, this is the way to do it. So kit A... I'm not quite sure the best way to do this. 
has this beautiful, they are $135 for the kit. So that's the six skeins of yarn, the pattern, um, which I haven't talked about much, but we may have talked about it in the past. I'm just gonna tease it with that. Some locally made notions and some locally made uh, treats. So this one is twig. And what's neat about the yak base is it's most hand dyed yarn starts with a, almost like a pure white base. And then they put the color on top of it. The yak is like a really light taupey color. So it takes dye in a completely different way. Lysianthus. So a lot of, um, it blooms in you. Stephanie does a lot of flower things too. So there are a lot of natural um, references. Pressed, so that's a green. The pictures are much more accurate on the, um, on the website. Dahlia, this beautiful red. They're a little bit more accurate back here. Forget-me-not and twine. So that's kit A. They're so pretty. And I'm hoping, so I will have one of each of these kits here in the shop. If you want to come in and see the colors in person, you're more than welcome to. And you can pre-order the kit in the shop too. You don't have to just do it online. You can call the shop or come in or email us and we'll be happy to make sure that we get you on the list. Kit B, and I think this is the one that um, the shawl pattern. It is not a Casapinka pattern, Lisa. <laughs> but one thing to keep in mind is you don't necessarily have to knit the shawl we come up with. This is still really, really gorgeous yarn. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the color combination that Stephanie knit a different shawl. In. I think she's going to try and bring it into me so you can at least see the yarn in person and feel how lovely it is. But this is kit B. Look at that deep color over there. This is more I can call it monochromatic because it's not, but she's got Copper Harbor pictured rocks and glamping. Oh. I'm, I'm having a hard time. I know she knit something up and will have it for me to show people, but I'm having a hard time not wanting to just make something with all three kits, three somethings. Then there is Tequamanon, Into the Woods and Mama Juice. <laughs> That deep burgundy is just gorgeous. So that is what Kit B looks like. Oh, so lovely. And last, this kit speaks my language. I would say it will speak my love language because it's the jewel tones that I love. And the names are really funny too. There's side part and skinny jeans. Just a bite. Let's be frank, which this is the only one that has something that's not a solid and look at how beautiful that is. Lisa. I should have Victoria come with me just so she can be my, my Vanna White and hold things up. Tealing well. Look at that teal. And I like your purple shirt. So 
So like I said, this one is kind of speaking my language. I love, love, love the jewel tones. But this is one of those situations where I would look and say, maybe I should do something that's a little bit outside my norm. But to give you an idea, like this beautiful dark burgundy color. There's one from one kit and one from another kit. So they are not, my camera does all kinds of weird things. They're not the same color. There are some that are obviously a little bit similar, but it would be fun to, um, to collect all three kits and then have all 18 colors and do something. Oh, you could do such a cool blanket with all 18. That would be so neat. Yeah, Leslie, I like that one too. This is what's, what's great about um, doing something like this is it really gives me an idea. Um, so even if you aren't, if you're not ready to buy one of the kits right now, I'd love for you guys to put in the comments which one is your favorite. Um, this is kind of one of those ways that I, I like to be able to hear from all of you. which one you like the best. Um, it helps me get out of my comfort zone when I'm ordering yarn from dyers, so I'm not just getting what I like all the time. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about this. Um, kit A, kit A, B. I see lots of B lovers, that's great. Oh, you can't go wrong with any of them, that's for sure. So $135 to pre-order. Again, the value will be at least $145. I don't, I don't have everything finalized, but I will make sure that you get some goodies in there. <laughs> Chandra, that's what we do. You already have similar colors because we just gravitate to the same colors. Tammy likes C, B likes B. Ah, cool. Thank you for your feedback. I, I appreciate that. Um, so I will, like I said, my goal overall is to have them in stock for local yarn shop day, April 30th. And uh, I can't wait. I've had these three kits sitting in the back for over a month and I keep staring at them and keep trying to figure out what's what's the best way to do it. And I think Melissa was in on Saturday and we kind of were um, bouncing ideas off of each other. And I think this is gonna be good. Bev, come in and look at them. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Melissa and Chandra are yarn soul sisters, yes. <laughs> A lot of people like B. Cool. So um, pre-order is open now. If you have any questions after um, after the live is done, feel free to again put them in the comments, text the shop, call the shop, email me, Facebook message me. <laughs> you, you can find me. Chase me down somewhere. I think, oh, the, the one last thing that I um, mentioned before, but now is available on the website um, to purchase or to pre-order also are the J'adore needle sets from Knitter's Pride. So those are the purple square needles. Um, they are $105.99 um, and they will be to me as soon as my Notions distributor gets them in their hands. They are still, uh, as much as we don't hear much these days about um, things going through customs, it still happens. So um, slowdowns happen, but as soon as I have them in my hands, I will get them to all of you that have pre-ordered and I will make sure that I have enough for you. I've already bumped up the order a couple times. <laughs> That's kind of the good thing about them not 
shipping yet from the warehouses, I can just keep calling and saying, add a couple more, add a couple more because it's purple. I know you guys love purple. And the needle sizes I think are six to 11. The interchangeable needles, cables, case, a case, some cute little metal heart stitch markers. Um, so I do have photos of that or a photo of that on the website too. Oh, there you go. Melissa posted that, she's so good. What else? Local stuff. Um, some of you probably saw me post yesterday that Victoria and I went for coffee at Creation Coffee. Um, Creation has their main location in Midland. Um, it looks like they just recently opened a second location in Mount Pleasant. And this past week they opened their Saginaw location. So they're on Titabawassee Road. Um, kind of where they're where Hello Sushi used to be. So kind of right across from um, the new steakhouse that I can't think of the name of, Texas Roadhouse, kind of right across from there. Oh, Melissa put a good description. Yes, excellent. So Victoria and I went there for coffee yesterday. Um, if you're not familiar with Creation Coffee, they roast their own um, beans. They have a roaster. I think they're roasted in Midland. Uh, so they do, they're at the coffee shop tea, espresso-based drinks. Um, I never remember if the correct term is brew or drip coffee. They do pour overs. Um, we also got a little bit of breakfast. Victoria got a bagel and cream cheese and I got um, like a little muffin breakfast sandwich. Um, they do have a sign that says their bagels are made in house, which I think is kind of cool. Um, they got, they got a thumbs up from Victoria other than she had a fight with the cream cheese, but that's just, that's just her. So that's what we did locally. So please give them some love. Um, they are open seven days a week. This past week they had limited hours. I think it was like nine to four as kind of a soft opening. I saw they posted today that they've expanded that to eight to five. And I think their plans are to broaden that even further once they get going. But the two ladies working there were lovely. And the space is well laid out. Tables are spaced far apart. They have um, kind of a little uh, high top bar where you can sit and look toward um, out the window toward the road and the sights, I guess. <laughs> Hi, Aunt Jackie. <laughs> yeah, a little bit late. Uh, so yeah, check them out. Give them your business, keep them in business because Victoria and I need Sunday coffee. <laughs> um, I think I'm doing a double check, but I think that's all I have for this week. As usual, I get on here thinking I don't have much to talk about. And then all of a sudden it's almost 45 minutes or more later because I like chatting with you all. So again, a reminder, I will not be on live next Monday, but I am going to try to do something from Florida because I don't think I can go three weeks without talking to you all. I will be trying to post um, reminders about um, upcoming things and hopefully I don't overwhelm Karen too much in the shop with um, talking everybody to come in and, <laughs> and buy things while I'm gone, but that would be fun. So the shop will still have normal hours. Karen will be here um, Wednesdays through Saturdays like she usually is. And Deb will be here on Saturdays. And yeah, I think that's it. I will be on vacation starting next Monday, Chicago for three days, Florida for two weeks. Can't wait to get in the sunshine, take a couple layers off. And yeah, I started tanning. I'm a little bit more tan this week. Not so red like I was last week. Um, I will be thinking of you all and I hope everybody has a good week and that you stay creative and that you are inspired to start something or finish something or make some good progress or rip something out, but just keep being creative. And I will see you all in 
a few weeks, if not sooner, or if you don't stop into the shop to see me this week, I'm here Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. All right. Bye, everybody. <laughs>